This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Tuesday, September the 11th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, with Hurricane Isaac expected to start impacting Barbados tomorrow, the local Department of Emergency Management has activated its standard operating procedures and continues to monitor the progress of Isaac. The DEM has also requested that residents advance their disaster preparedness activities. Though the local disaster emergency services department, as the sub-regional focal point, has contacted all participating states within their region and are in the process of repositioning supplies so they be required to assist any impacted territory. Meanwhile, President of the Barbados Homeless and Vagrant Society, Kima Safri, is fearing for the lives of his charges as Hurricane Isaac draws closer to this country. Yesterday, Safri told Barbados Today that with most of the properties which once provided some shelter for the homeless are no longer available. Last year, we had to literally drive about, picking up homeless persons one by one and placing them here at our office so that they could be off the streets out of the conditions and um, in a, a warm and safe environment. And we definitely would like that in this time, if this is to be the case with this hurricane, that we uh, um, seek to assist the homeless and make sure that they are not in any harm. Um, as we will know that hurricanes pick up very high winds and they toss whatever they get in their way about the place and when you have homeless persons sleeping or lying or standing out in this kind of weather with possible high winds they too could be in danger of losing their life or being struck by an object um, at any time in other news now the region's main development bank says the mere motley led government is heading in the right direction by bringing the international monetary fund on board to finance its homegrown Barbados Economic Restructuring and Transformation Program known as BERT. Director of Economics at the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Justin Ram, told Barbados today his institution has been saying for years now that the debt had been on an unsustainable path and the government needed to reduce spending and improve revenue. This is a step in the right direction. Um, it's going to be... It's going to have some challenges initially because it's not going to be easy whenever there's fiscal consolidation and also some um, level of debt restructuring. There are going to be challenges, but from what we have seen and what the government has articulated, um, we think that this is the right path, um, and we would expect to see um, an improved performance and improved economic performance of the Barrios economy. In the, in the, future. the CDB Director of Economics was speaking yesterday after the board approved a grant of U.S. $400,000 to help the government further develop its economic reform program. The Crane Resort has struck a U.S. $54 million timesharing contract with the globally acclaimed Hilton Grand Vacation. Owner of the crane, Paul Doyle, said this was a show of confidence in the Barbados economy by officials of the Florida-based hotel chain. Doyle, who made the revelation at a media conference yesterday afternoon at government headquarters, said he is expecting this deal to provide a significant boost to this country's crucial tourism industry. We've made a, we've made a, uh, I guess a sale transaction where they've purchased timeshare weeks, timeshare inventory, timeshare intervals from the crane. Um, it, the transaction value is is uh, 54 million US dollars. So it's a significant, significant transaction. And that's just phase one. Uh, we see this, I think I can speak for them. You know, we, we want to see this as a very long term transaction where it, it's multiple transactions over time, uh, where they will be investing in timeshare in Barbados. The you know, I think, you know, that an investment like that does demonstrate a confidence in, in, in Barbados. And I think that confidence is something that we all need at this time. And, um, you know, so the, I think the timing of this is very important for both the crane as a company and, uh, and for Barbados. And Prime Minister Mia Motley welcomed the new investment while lauding the operators of the crane for their work in growing the tourism industry over the years. Motley said she was eagerly looking forward to phase two of the deal, 
while pointing out that the move should help boost visitor arrivals from the U.S. market. The government of Barbados recognizes that if we are to get out of where we have found ourselves, where we have inherited, that the only way we can do it is through growth. And this is growth. Um, and as important as phase one is, we are equally looking forward to phase two, because phase two is about building new product and ensuring that that new product can be sold, um, bringing additional value to the country and additional jobs, additional foreign exchange. So we really are very happy. There's regional and international news after this short break. BITS Central Bank Meets Blockchain Conference is the only conference in the world that brings together regulators, governments and private entities to discuss how they might work together using blockchain to make a positive impact on the lives of the people in the Caribbean. We are so proud to host this forum, which allows for constructive dialogue and engagement because it recognizes the transformative potential of distributed ledger technology and the work that BIT is doing in the region. Blockchain technology has the power to address the demand for easier and real-time KYC solutions while improving overall KYC standards. With the advent of digital currency, these AML solutions can strengthen compliance like never before. We have an excellent lineup of speakers, including our keynote speaker, the Honorable Mia Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Alden McLaughlin, Premier of the Cayman Islands, Dr. Jack Meaning, Economist from the Bank of England, Therese Turner-Jones, the General Manager for the Caribbean Division of the IDB, and many more noteworthy speakers who you don't want to miss. The Inter-American Development Bank supports this event and is our platinum sponsor. We're so grateful to them for their support and acknowledgement of our work. We hope you can join us on September the 18th, 2018 at the Hilton Barbados Resort to hear what leaders in the region and in the blockchain space have to say about the role of blockchain technology in promoting social inclusion, financial empowerment and economic growth for this and future generations. See you there. Welcome back with news from the region now. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service continues to implement Operation Strike Back in an attempt to get crime under control. The initiative, launched by the new Commission of Police, Gary Griffith, is said to already be yielding results. A week after it was launched, Operation Strike Back continues. And according to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, it's getting results. Last weekend, the TTPS focused on Maracas St. Joseph, Bonaire, and Aruca, resulting in several arrests. And today, they turned their attention to other areas of Northeast Trinidad. Today's operation started at 4 a.m. and included officers attached to the Northern Division Criminal Investigations Department, the Northern Division Task Force, the Organized Crime and Intelligence Unit, and the Canine Branch. A release from the TTPS says roadblocks were mounted in strategic areas, and search warrants were executed against known offenders. Acting ACP McDonald Jacob explained the reason for targeting the La Horcata, St. Joseph, Arima, and Malabar districts. Within the last few months, we saw an escalation of shooting and woundings, and even robberies, especially that of robbery of motor vehicles. And on the international scene, Florence, the most powerful storm to menace the U.S. mainland this year, intensified into a Category 4 hurricane as it howled closer to the Carolinas on Monday, prompting evacuation of more than one million people to higher ground. More in this Reuters report. The Carolinas bracing for catastrophe as Hurricane Florence, the most powerful storm to take aim at the U.S. mainland this year, bears down on the East Coast. We're in for a real episode here. South Carolina on Monday ordered an estimated one million people to evacuate its coast. In North Carolina, officials had already ordered a quarter million residents and visitors to begin evacuating the Outer Banks. We here in North Carolina are bracing for a hard hit. On Monday, the storm intensified to a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 130 miles per hour and was due to gain strength before making landfall early Thursday. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. Now you can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. 
and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media Inbus terminals as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Now you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.